<laughs> Hello, welcome to Mo the heart of Looney Moose Farms, I guess you could say. We're doing a video today showing you how we our microgreens because that's how we got started at Looney Moose, really, is microgreens about a year ago, year and a half ago now. And so we started selling microgreens. A lot of people don't know what microgreens are. So microgreens are just what they said, tiny green plants. And I will show you here, we're not packaging them. But you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, there's just a tiny little root. So we take all the power and the nutrition that's in the seed. <laughs> Sorry, my camera girl's making funny faces and I Sorry, can't. Sorry, I'm trying to one. zoom in. And so, okay, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of fuzzy. Well, I probably can't zoom in too well because it's just, a, you know. But anyway, this is broccoli. And if we actually planted these in the right distance apart and all that, it would grow into a broccoli plant. But microgreens take all the nutrients in the seed, grow it to about four or five inches tall, and that's when you harvest it. So, anyways, the broccoli has all the vitamins of the full-grown broccoli. In fact, some studies from Stanford say that microgreens have up to 40 times more nutrition than the actual full-grown plant because of the power of the seed. So this is what we're doing. We're going to package. <laughs> I'm trying to work around the mask. <laughs> so we're we're going to package some to take to our nature market um, store that buys them and sells them for uh, from us to the community. I'm stuttering here. That buys nature market. Nature market that buys our microgreens and our packages, and we sell them there to the community through a whole food store. And then of course we'll be going to our farm markets this year but it's going to be very very different so we hope we can make it we can keep our business going through the COVID-19 changes that are coming up in the farmers market and if you wonder what broccoli microgreen tastes like well broccoli <laughs> um, radishes have a radish flavor sunflower have a nutty flavor to them like a sunflower seed carrot, with a nut, nut carrot mix yeah. so they're fantastic. If you ever see them in your neighborhood or area, grab some. You won't regret it. Salads, sandwiches, soups. We're going to start doing some cooking videos with them so you can see how they use actually in cooking videos. So, but for now, we're just going to show you our harvesting process. We always wear gloves to harvest, but now we're adding our mask because it's fitting under the circumstances we're, we're all in right now. So, we're going to start harvesting. If I can see. I'm going to take out my lab. This ought to be interesting. Do you need help? No, I got it. I can I can help. I'm good. Okay. So we have our scale here. Clean that out to zero. We just basically take them. That's a weird angle. We basically take them, and you can see the roots down here. I'll cut some and show you. We cut just above the, the our, our substrate, which is very clean compost, no all organic. And we fill our containers with about an ounce and a half of product. And so sometimes you pull up roots and you just trim those off. All our equipment is sterilized every time. Tabletops are sterilized. And on top of that, we put fresh paper towel down just in case something happens. In fact, I need to move that over. <laughs> there we go. And that's about a 1.5 ounces of microgreens. If you look in here, I don't know how good the camera can get it. I'll see if I can zoom in. But this, I'll show you. This is actually a good example of, I don't know how good it can get it, but these are the seeds. No, I can't get well, that. Well, we'll have to get a better camera to get a zoom in on that. But we, they're the seeds just lay on top of our subsoil, put little, and they don't use much again, not much roots. They just grow up out of them. Because they have all the nutrients the plant needs right there in the seed. I'm not a very good camera girl. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> We're learning. Be. We're all learning. And now the trickiest part for me is getting all the microgreens inside the container. That's the 
So we grow, I think we have right now 10 or 15 different version varieties we can grow. I think we're up to 10 or 15 varieties. We grow sunflower, we grow rat, two types of radishes, we grow broccoli, we grow pea, two different types of peas. We grow, what else do we grow? Um, cabbage, 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 kale, kale arugula, arugula, broccoli, cilantro, amaranth, uh, basil, uh, so much. So there's just a full, and of course, then we have some very specialized one called borage. Mm -hmm. A lot of our European viewers may know that one really well. I know that's real popular over in the European countries. I don't know if we're actually pronouncing that right. Yes, we don't know. We are Americans and we are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we are doing our best to pronounce I've it. I've heard some people say borage. Borage? Uh-huh. Well, um, borage, borage, tomato, tomato. <laughs> they take, I think it sounds fancier when you it go is. borage. 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 <laughs> they do that with your pinky out, of course. The, of course. <laughs> Don't try and do that with your pinky in because you probably get some kind of unpleasant <laughs> borage. So, no, we actually, I really like borage. It's a really wonderful cucumber flavor. But if you don't like cucumbers, you probably won't like the borage. It's an edible flower. It does grow into an edible flower, which we have yet to do. We're talking about trying some of that. Yeah. We, have, we might grow some of that into full size. Just to I see could put it in the outdoor garden. Yeah, we could try that this summer and see how that goes. That could be fun. Yeah. See if we can grow some edible flowers. Nope, see, they stick their little heads out while you're... I think they're trying to escape or something. They're like the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is how we got started at Looney Moose. Just kind of our friend was telling us about them. We, two years ago, we didn't know what microgreens were be honest with it. We mm -hmm. hadn't heard of them either. As soon as we start, our friend mentioned them to us, we decided to start doing some research into them. And we were like, wow, that's really cool. And so we got a little bit of stuff. It doesn't take too much to get into them. Not to get started. Anyway. Not to get started for personal use. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we started it in April, the camera girl behind you there. She's got a really good knack at growing things, so she figured it out pretty quickly. We figured out that growing in our basement actually is healthier for the microgreens than our outbuilding. Yeah, they like this climate in our basement much more. We can keep the temperature more controlled. We can keep the humidity under more control. So we moved everything down to a clean grow area. And you'll see our planting station is never where we harvest because we don't want to mix the any kind of dirt or anything we don't not that our dirt is dirty our dirt literally is very clean it's organic compost no no artificial soil no artificial chemicals or anything from the source we buy it from and so this is what the heart of Looney Moo started we since as you've seen our videos Expanded to chickens and no, ducks. actually the chickens came first. Well, chickens are Looney yeah. Moose 2.0, yeah. Yeah, well that was before Looney Moose, but we did start with the chickens. Yep. We had microgreens before chickens, didn't we? No, we started chickens hmm. two and a half years ago. Well, there you go. And the microgreens are about a year and a half ago. Oh wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Yep. I didn't know the history of my own business, so <laughs> well, I won't put that in part. You of didn't it. really care about. I mean, you love the chickens, but you didn't pay attention to the dates with them. Yeah, all. that wasn't really. I'm a reluctant farmer. That I, was more my thing. I, it was my desire to have chickens. I enjoy the. I, I now we then we so so 2.0 was microgreens, I guess. Mm -hmm. 3.0 now is the. Ducks. To the ducks, and we're talking about adding rabbits, so that'll be Looney Moose 4.0, I suppose. <laughs> I think it's just Looney Moose expanding. We're, we're, we're ever evolving, I guess, if you yeah. will, expanding, adapting. And I'm trying to talk them into alpacas. That one's a ways out. That I, one's going to take some time. I, I'm still trying. The reluctant farmer is going, no! They're just so cute. I've got to get, you got to first get used to the rabbit idea, so. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. 
She could probably talk me into a camel. <laughs> a camel. I don't know why. Alpacas are easier to manage than a well, camel. I didn't say they weren't. I just said that. <laughs> you gonna milk a camel? No. <laughs> that's why I'm not getting a camel. I just said you could talk me into a camel easier. That's all I said. <laughs> Actually, she probably couldn't, to be honest with you. No, I don't think I could. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to talk you into alpacas. Someday, maybe. If the world turns right, and the moons align and the stars align, and, and it's like that. Or I just smile at you. Bat her little eye. <laughs> That's how she got the chicken. That's how we got two kids, too. And <laughs> <laughs> so... So, and, and a dog, and two dogs, and five cats. Yeah, I'm done. Anyway, <laughs> eventually we'll see you. Uh, we don't we, have five cats. In our house, there are five cats. Oh, you're right, but they there are children's. Two of them are in the children's bedroom. They're not bedroom. children anymore, they're adults. Adult children. But they have their own cats. And then we, and we had another one given to us from an adoption, but uh, that has adopted my daughter. So yeah, it was supposed to be my kitty. And there we go. We got five broccoli out of our tray, so that's really nice. And you can see how pretty they are, and salads and sandwiches and just about eggs and about anything, anything you can think of topping these with adds that nutrition. Tacos. So. Nachos. Now what we do with our leftovers, we take them, we take it out, and we put it in our compost pile, mm -hmm. and then a year or so down the road we get to reuse them. So that's. We well, uh, have not gotten to the reusing part. We're no, still we haven't there yet. <laughs> yeah, so, it takes a while to build that up. <laughs> so that is how we harvest our microgreens, and if you're ever interested in microgreens, we will be glad to sell them to you. We can't ship them too far because. They only have limited. They only have limited life without air refrigeration. And we'll show you our sunflower shoots here. You can just set that right on there. So our sunflower shoots again are beautiful. They're green. They're lush. Now our goal is to sell them live at the farmers market like this. We can't do that this year because of the COVID until later this year. So we're going to be packaging them, taking them to farmers market. But soon we'd like to sell them just like this. A beautiful little tray to take home. Keep, cut them fresh, use them when you want to. Last probably a week and a half or so, two weeks. All right, well, I guess that's about it for the Looney Moose microgreen demonstration of harvesting. We will be taking these today up to Nature's Market. So if you live in Holland, go by there and grab yourself some fresh microgreens. If you live in the area, you know, check out our website, lootymoosefarms.com. You can get on a subscription service. You can contact us to find out some more. We often have some duck eggs and chicken eggs available from time to time. Um, and we're going to be going to markets. You'll be seeing more videos. And check out our Looney Moose Farms YouTube channel. That's very important. Have fun. Like them. Share them. We're having a lot of fun making videos of me, the reluctant farmer. But you're dragged, doing so good at it. Being dragged into the EIEIO <laughs> world. And... Uh, <laughs> so here we go. So we'll talk to you later.